How's it going everybody? I am Loxavian and today I wanted to go over UPBGE's documentation. There is a big issue that I think a lot of new people to this engine run into and that is information. For a lot of engines, you generally use a coding language to make the logic work in your game. What makes UPBGE a little bit more accessible are the logic nodes. There are two types, you have logic bricks and logic nodes. Logic bricks being a simple way to add game logic into your game, something like making a cube spin. Logic bricks can be pretty powerful on their own, but they do have some limitations. With logic bricks, you will not be able to pull information like object position data. But with logic nodes, you do have this flexibility. You also have a ton more options for logic. So let's just take a look at UPBGE's documentation. Looking at the documentation, we have a raycast, and this raycast has quite a few little things on it. You will see these little colored sockets, and each one of these sockets has its own information. As you can see, the documentation for UPBGE can be pretty lackluster at times. You can see that a lot of the socket data is not written in. So if you wanted to know what the face data does, I'm sorry, but there's just no information on it at the moment. Let's just see if we can pick one from random. So if I want to learn what the walk node does, we can come down here and it gives us some basic descriptions of what it does. It also gives us an example, and I love examples. Examples are so important. How will somebody know how to use something if it does not have an example? As we can see this example, we have an on update going into the walk node and a vector math node going into the vector socket. You'll also notice that all the nodes that connect to each other are generally color coded. You'll see that the on update has a red socket going into the condition of the walk node. Purple sockets will generally be a vector socket. Something I'd like to see in documentation would be a paragraph of what it does and what kind of things it can be used for. My goal is not to trash on the UPBGE documentation, but there are just things that are missing and they've been missing for a long time. And we did get some big updates for nodes, especially for version 4.0. I'm very excited to see where 4.0 goes because it seems like there's a lot of progress being made on it. Now that we're done with the documentation, let's take a look at some examples in UPBGE. In Blender, let's take a look at the raycast and see what each one of the sockets actually do. I have this first cube selected. I'm just going to add a raycast node. So the condition, this little red socket, is basically a true or false. Whenever a action happens, this is going to trigger this condition. So we want an action. And the action I'm going to use is a on update. So if I add an on update, you'll see that it also has a little red dot. So if I connect these two together, basically the on update is going to trigger the raycast every single frame. As we talked about earlier, the purple sockets are vector positions. So what I want to do is figure out how I can adjust these positions. You can see that we have three axes to edit. For example, I want a raycast to shoot from this cube over to this cube. So let's take a look at our cube's location. We are seven meters. We are negative seven meters away from the origin point. So I'm going to put negative seven in here. So this is going to start the raycast at the center of this cube now. For the aim, I want it to go to this cube, which is six meters away from the origin. So I'm just going to go on the Y axis and put six. Now to see where this ray cast is going, I'm going to click on the visualize socket. Pink sockets are Boolean values. So this is always going to be a true or false. In fact, if you wanted to, you could come in here and go Boolean like so, add a Boolean in, and you can see that they both have pink sockets, connect that in. And if you make this true, it'll trigger this local value. Going back to the visualize, if I press P on the keyboard, you will see a raycast going from the center of my one cube to the other cube, but you'll see that it's not going to the center of the second cube. This is because the raycast is stopping on the surface of this other cube. If I were to add a property, so this will only interact with an object with the property uh, cube, you'll see that the raycast is now red and goes to the center of the other cube. This is because it's not interacting with this cube that is currently touching. When a raycast is green, this means that there has been a hit. So if I give this cube the property cube, you'll see that it now interacts with the cube again. Whenever this is blank, this will basically mean the raycast will interact with any object in the scene. So what does x-ray mean? So if we come in here, and I'm just going to get rid of this property, and I hit x-ray. So let's give this a property, and we'll just call it ray. Now, if I give this the property ray, you'll see that the ray cast goes straight through the Suzanne head, activates, and goes to the second cube. But the only thing that will be activating this is the Suzanne head. The X-ray just basically means that it will pass through and continue on. If I disable X-ray and press play again, you'll see that it no longer interacts with the Suzanne head. So you'll see that there is a advanced option on this ray cast. If I press advanced, you'll see that it gives us quite a few new sockets. You'll now see that there's also a custom distance option at the bottom of the node. This custom distance basically means if I click this, 
it will kind of discount what all this stuff is here, only taking in the directional data and giving it a distance of 100. If I press play, you'll now see that the Raycast goes 100 units. So if we come up to the top, as result is basically a true or false, and whenever the on update is going, it will change from false to true. So for an example, let's just make this touch this cube again, and we're going to give it the property cube, and we'll come over here and give this the property cube as well. So with the property cube, we'll see that it'll pass through the Suzanne head. So I'll put on x-ray so that it actually touches this. Now that we have the Raycast activating on the opposite cube, let's do a little example here. Let's set the position of the Suzanne head onto this cube. So what I can do is get a set world position. So you can see we have some similar colors to our other node, but you'll also notice that this X, Y, and Z property has a gray socket. And a gray socket just basically means it is a value socket. So what I can do is take this has result and connect it to the condition. And then we need to select the object we want to affect. And we could connect this picked object to this object socket, basically saying that whatever we have a result with is going to be the object that we set the position of. But we don't really want that. So let's disconnect that and use the eyedropper tool and select Suzanne. We want to affect Suzanne and put it at the position of our Raycast. Currently, we could just put in a value. If we put in a random value or just put in four and we press play, you'll see that the Suzanne will be positioned four units on every axis. Picked point is going to be the point of the Raycast that is hitting the object. So if I take the picked point and connect it into the value socket and I press play, you'll see that the Suzanne head is now placed on the surface of the cube. The picked normal is basically just the normal data from the face of the picked object. So you can see if I put picked normal into the value, not much is going to happen. If I rotate this cube and it selects a different normal, you can see that the Suzanne head moves just slightly. This can be used for grabbing the face data of an object where you can place an object just on the center outside of the face. The ray direction is simply just the direction of the ray, whether that's going to be on the X, Y, or Z axis. So you can see that when I print this value, we get a one on the Y axis. So now we have the material face name. So if I grab this, I'm just going to put this socket into our print node, press play and open up the console. You can see that the material is just material. So this will just grab the name of the material that is selected on the object. If I were to name this to red. So if I press play again and we take a look at this, it is now red. So it's just grabbing the name of the material that is on the object. I'm not entirely sure what the purpose of UV chords is, but it does exist. So there's that. Going down the logic node, we'll see that we have origin and aim. So we kind of explained this a little bit where we can change the position of the origin and aim of our object. But this can be pretty static and it would only work if your objects didn't move. To make this a little bit more useful for a actual purpose, let's add in a get world position node and we can duplicate this node. So connecting these sockets here, it's going to allow us to pick an object and basically do the same thing. So our origin object, we want to get the position of our cube. And for the aim, this is going to be where our ray ends. So we'll select the second cube. If I press play, you'll see that the exact same thing happens. But as you can see, if I were to disable this, so we'll just disconnect these nodes. You'll see that we have kind of the same thing, but if I move this cube up, the raycast is no longer in line. But if I connect these back together and I press play, the raycast will always, no matter where the cube goes, go to our second cube. We're going to go down to our material so we can actually select a material and this basically does the same thing as the property whatever object has this red material will activate the raycast so if i were to actually get rid of this red material on these two objects and i press play you'll see that it no longer activates the raycast but if i were to add this red material to suzanne and put suzanne in the way of the raycast i'm just going to get rid of this property and i press play you will see that it activates suzanne now, currently, we still have it sent to this uh, weird position, so I'm just going to put this as picked point. There we go. So you can see Suzanne is now acting as intended with the Raycast. So that's pretty much all that we have to talk about about the Raycast. There's a ton of things you can do with this and a ton of different uh, examples I could make, but I will leave that up to you to figure out on your own. And there are so many logic nodes, it would take me weeks to talk about every single one of them, especially in detail. But as you can see, pretty much all of these, we can add a play animation, will have very similar things. Once you learn what these sockets do, you'll be able to interpolate that on your own. 
There's so much to talk about with logic nodes that it would probably take me forever to talk about every single one of them. But if you were to just go through and take a look at each one of the sockets, you can kind of infer from what color the socket is. If it's gray, then it's going to be a value socket. And you can use that with floats, strings, and integers. Or you can also attach it to properties. I think with that, I'm going to leave this video here. If you have any questions or concerns, let me know in the comments. Also, if you have any other logic nodes you would like covered, let me know as well. With that, I've been Locks, and I will see you in the next video. Now let's get out of here.